Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some feature history, it's been a hot minute, this time, the Spanish Civil War. An extremely complicated situation in 10 minutes. They usually do a great job, so let's go ahead and see if that trend of them doing a great job continues. But before we dive into the video, make sure you go check out the links in the description box or in my pinned comment. would love it if you join the Discord and share some history memes. Um... Or share some history book recommendations. Excuse me. Let's dive in. A war. A war of ideology. A war that introduced revolutionary technologies and tactics. A war with such human and societal cost, it would never be forgotten. No, no, the, the other one. <clears throat> there you go. God damn it. Hello and welcome to Feature History, featuring the Spanish Civil War. It was a war that caught the eyes of politicians, media and creatives around the world. What began as the Spaniards' war was co-opted by fascists and communists of the world seeking to show the merit of their might. A proto-Cold War, if you will. The seeds of this war were planted prior to the reigns of communism and fascism. They were planted in the 19th century. If you'd like to get a better idea of the bigger picture, you can check out Sweeney's video on the history of Spain. Also do that because I told you to. <laughs> Moving on, the 19th century- Have I watched that video? I can't remember if I've watched Sweeney's, uh, Spain video. I've watched a lot of Sweeney's videos. Can't remember. It was a turbulent time for Spain. Opposition to the monarchy resulted in pushes for constitutional rights, liberalism, and even a short-lived republic. Combined with the destruction of the empire by the US and revolutionaries, the Spanish state was weakened and the populace disunified. Alfonso XIII, King of Spain, would launch a disastrous hmm. war against Morocco in the 1920s. This would lose him the majority support of his army, so we could just sprinkle that on top of the <laughs> irritated civilians. Alfonso oh, no. recognized this and so just up and left the country in oh. 1931. The local government proclaimed itself the Second Republic, headed by Niceto Alcalá Zamora. Niceto and his committee promised change, a step into the 20th century, trade unions, land reform, secularization, women's liberation, and autonomy for Catalonia and the Basque Country. So many oh. revolutionary ideas at once left the right wing feeling alienated. Yeah. The actual introduction of these ideas was slow. Painfully slow. Every oh, no. single change left the right more concerned and the oh, left no. further disappointed. Oh, Had a no. great depression and the changes became slow. Oh, no. The anarchist confederation named Confederación Nacional del Trabajo, or just CNT if you're not a show-off, would okay, rally strikes you. and when the Republican government cracked down, they alienated the far left. To protest, the CNT refused to participate in the 1933 general election, which, funnily enough, led to a result they were unhappy with. The hmm. right-wing Catholic conservative Seda party, under Jose Maria Gil Robles y... Del piece off. Won a majority of the seats. The reforms that actually did get done were beginning to be reversed, and the military and cabinet began to be purged of leftists. The CNT retaliated in 1934, when they rallied up anarchists and communists alike to rise up in Asturias. The young general, Francisco Franco, was sent in and commanded the talented army of Africa to cross the revolution. The streets turned to battlefields. The workers were eventually defeated and suffered brutal reprisals against them. The gruesome scene foreshadowed the shape of things to come. The bitter tale sparked outrage and helped unify the left. Communists, anarchists, socialists, and plain old liberals realized to combat the right and to stand together. The Popular Front was formed. Reactions from the right intensified as well. Some believed a Jewish Bolshevik conspiracy was afoot to spread oh communism. The fascist Falange Party was formed by Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera. Politics was getting very violent and partisan very quickly. You couldn't just disagree with someone anymore, you had to silence them. The 1936 general elections would result in a narrow Popular Front victory, leaving the government in favour of the left. President Niceto would be exchanged in favour of Manuel Azaña. Primo de Rivera was arrested and the military was reorganised in an attempt to suppress chances of a coup. Jose Sanjuro, a man who attempted a coup in 1932, began conspiring another. <laughs> he made deals with more. If I had a nickel for every time Jose Sanjuro tried to lead a coup against Spain, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot. But it's weird that it's happened twice. Uh -huh, that's a reference for you. Anarchist, traditionalist, fascist, nationalist, anyone and everything right wing. The warnings of disloyalty were popping up left, right, and center, sending the government into a tizzy. On the night of July 12th, things went from bad to worse. Falange oh. gunmen shot down a socialist police officer in the capital of Madrid. The police scattered out to find and arrest anyone even slightly related. They'd asked the monarchist, Jose Calvo Sotelo, to come down to the station with them. 
a station he wouldn't reach. These killings made it clear this would not end politically. The coup was ready and the government was not. The people demanded to be armed, yet the government did not wish to do so as to admit they'd lost control. Seeing as they'd lost control, the people armed themselves. <laughs> The military coup launched in Morocco under Franco's command. Generals across Spain would rise up in every city. The police would reluctantly work with the leftists. This cooperation would result in the coup's miscarriage. Cities across the Republic would either fall or not, beginning to draw the front lines to a new bloody civil war. This would be a line between the Nationalists and the Republicans. The Nationalists took Seville, Castile and Leon, but the government held on to Valencia, Barcelona and most importantly, Madrid. The botched coup became drawn out. Soldier or civilian, man or woman, you were fighting. Whether that fight be one of tyranny versus freedom or righteous Christians versus godless communists. The scene was quite Cummies. surreal. You'd wake up, eat breakfast, fight on the front lines and then be home for dinner in bed. There was huh. a darker side as well. Nationalists would methodically sure. execute any suspected of dissent and the leftist republicans took it upon themselves to destroy any person or thing that represented the old ways. They took this as an opportunity to instate their own revolution. This would create some tension within the Dumb. Republican side. The Dumb government tension. wished only to survive, but communists and anarchists wished to instate their ideas of a utopia in the disorder. Their only common interest was hatred, nationalists. For those nationalists, the death of their mastermind in a plane crash would throw things a bit out of whack. A junta was established, Senior General Miguel Carbonellos to head it. This was all oh, very temporary. Stepping back for a moment, the sides seemed fairly even. The Nationalist Trump card was their disciplined army of Africa currently in Morocco. So how would they get the army into Spain proper? With Italian and German transports, of course. Mm. Their rebellion had the support of Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy, and to a degree, Portugal. It would start as supplies, but it would escalate to volunteers as the war progressed. Franco's army of Africa would arrive in Seville and push north towards Madrid, cutting through enemy territory and brutally crushing them in the Battle of Merida in August. The nationalist territory was connected, and Franco rewarded with the title Commander-in-Chief. When he rescued his allies in the Siege of Alcazar, that title would be bumped up to Caldillo, the unquestionable military head. It would be Franco's work that unified the many elements of the Nationalists. The Republicans okay. lacked this unity. The old government's cabinet would be thrown out in favour of a communist one. The communists attempted to unify the Republic in their own image. The anarchists viewed it as an affront to their revolution. Madrid would come under siege in November, and the new government retreated to Valencia. Only the passionate men and women remained to fight, adamant that the Nationalists would not pass. The fervor attracted those from all around the globe to come to Spain and fight for these ideas. It also attracted the Soviet Union, who began sending oh, aid no. of their own. Britain and France were anxious about tossing their hat into this quickly becoming proxy war, and so agreed to a pact of non-intervention. Regardless, Madrid stood, unyielding for years. The nationalists held siege, but diverted forces to try and take everything around Madrid. They spread across the south, and in 1937 marched into the isolated Basque country. This region would become famously subject to the bombers of the Luftwaffe. The Republicans oh, would remain yeah. firmly on the back foot after this defeat. They attempted some offences in 1938, but every 10 metres gained would cost them 10 gallons in blood. Franco chased Ooh. the Republicans back across the north, pushing them to the sea and cutting their territory in two. The Republicans fought back in the Battle of Ebro, but to no avail. Perhaps they could hold out until the inevitable world war broke out, and then they'd have the support of the Allies, certainly. Well, mm. Britain and France's appeasement of Hitler would lay a nice consistent shit on that idea. Morale <laughs> shattered, they retreated. The war was decided. Now the only thing left was to lose. 1939 dawned on an invasion into Catalonia, the anarchist homeland. Barcelona fell on January 26. In Madrid, the Republicans could still not agree. Anarchist and communist hostilities spilt out over the peace treaty. A civil war broke out within a civil war. The anarchists oh, that's always Pasado, fun. threw out communist Juan Negrin and began negotiations on the behalf of the Republic, but Franco accepted nothing less than unconditional surrender. Yep. Madrid fell on March 26, and Franco announced victory on April 1st. Oh, look at that but coat no, he it has. Wasn't a full. Some Republicans were lucky. They escaped or somehow hid. A lot did not, dying by either their own hand or a soldier's. Franco, as the absolute dictator, kept in check the many factions he had once unified as nationalists. He had attempted to negotiate with them, but if pressed he had no qualms purging them. The country was centralised under him. Tradition and religion held supreme. The economy was rebuilt and resurged at the expense of the worker. The monarchy was revived in 1947. Franco, of course, regent for life. Mm. Did you think he was going to step down? He selected his heir as Juan Carlos de Bourbon in 1969, and upon Franco's death in 1975, Juan Carlos I ascended to the throne. 
The king would reform Spain, reviving democracy and modernizing the country. The consequences of the civil war no longer lingered so heavily over everyone. Mourning could finally begin. The sorrow and sheer human cost of the war are still deeply remembered and felt to this day, and with that sorrow continues some hatred. The sometimes violent division between left and right remains, not only in Spain, but the world. It's just too easy to call your opponent a dangerous communist or corrupting fascist. So we could attempt to discuss policy, debate ethics, and reach some kind of compromise, or you could just punch someone in the face because he's a Nazi, I swear is it. Well, wasn't that just a pleasant bedtime story? I'd like to thank Sweeney for doing this little old collab with me. And that was Future History Spanish Civil War. I think they did a pretty good job in covering the information. Definitely a lot very fast, because really that's kind of what you got to do. Um, but I think this is definitely um, a very good video of theirs, because it, felt, it, was, it wasn't it was hard to follow, right? I was, it was pretty easy, actually, to follow along with, despite the buttload of information and names being thrown out, right? Still able to follow the progression of the Spanish Civil War. So that is two thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.